Hello comrades, you watching Red Ivan Airsoft and today we'll talk about uniforms and equipment of the servicemen of the 1st Battalion of 135th Motor Rifle Regiment of Russian Armed Forces during the conflict in South Ossetia, August of 2008. And before we begin, we need to clarify something. Russian peacekeeping contingent in South Ossetia was based on the battalions of 135th Motor Rifle Regiment, which one by one performed uh, peacekeeping duties in South Ossetia. And on August of 2008, peacekeeping duties were performed by the 2nd Battalion, while the 1st Battalion crossed the uh, Russo-Georgian border as a part of two battalion tactical groups of Russian armed forces. So if you are interested in uniforms of the Russian peacekeepers of that time, you need to go and watch the video on the channel Vayenne Abzor, link will be in the description, where its host Ivan Nikolaev already described in details uniforms and equipment of the 2nd Battalion of 135th Motor Rifle Regiment, which was stationed in South Ossetia at that time. This video is in Russian, but it has subtitles. Well, in this video, we'll discuss uniforms and equipment of the 1st Battalion. And despite the fact that 1st and 2nd they are both battalions of 135th Motor Rifle Regiment, based on whether or not they are performing peacekeeping duties at this time, their uniforms and equipment may vary. And we'll start our conversation about uniforms with hats. During the conflict in South Ossetia, most troopers of the 1st Battalion wore caps in the Soviet cut and camouflage called Flora. Also, they wore medical bandanas. Some troopers also could be seen in black or camouflaged winter hats. Most servicemen wore uniform in flora camouflage pattern made to specification of 1994, which is slightly modified Soviet cut. Or uniforms in flora camouflage pattern made to the specification of 2005, which is deeper modification and I would say simplification of the Soviet cut. The main differences between uniforms made to the specification of 1994 and 2005 are lack of the waist adjustment drawstrings and the mesh inserts in the armpit area on 2005 cut jackets, lack of the side cargo pockets, lack of the waist adjustment straps and more restrictive cut on 2005 cut pants. Unlike peacekeepers of the 2nd Battalion, who had exemplary appearance, white colors and all required patches, fighters of the 1st Battalion did not wear patches, most of them did not have white color, they often used civilian black or other colored t-shirts, so I am also wearing civilian t-shirt, and basically they could have only cockades, color insignias and ranks, and rarely all at once. A lot of them wore Gorka 3, and based on the coloration it appears to be Gorka 3 made by bars. Also some commercial suits in Berezka camouflage pattern could be seen. And I want to highlight that this is exactly a commercial version and not the Soviet mask and coverall. And on one picture I found a soldier in Soviet Bhutan camouflage pattern, which was pretty rare by that time. Belts. It could be brown leather officer's belt or soldier's belt with the Soviet star buckle. Boots. Most soldiers had so-called crocodile, crocodile boots, but with molded sole rather than early nailed sole. However, other black leather military-style boots made by Russia or other countries could be used. By that time it was traditional for soldiers of all post-Soviet countries to buy the boots on their own. Helmets. First of all, it was Soviet SSH-40. Technically, SSH-60 and SSH-68 also should be used. But on all pictures I saw, based on the canvas chin strap, it was only SSH-40. Also, more modern helmets of 6B7 family were used. On this picture you see 6B7-1, but also standard 6B7 and 6B7-1M were used. And while almost all peacekeepers had modern 6B7 family helmets, in the 1st Battalion 6B7 family helmets were pretty rare, and the main helmet was SSH-40. And a lot of soldiers did not wear the helmet at all. And if they were issued with SSH-40, I can understand this. Also take a look at this interesting SSH-40 Coyote color helmet cover. However, most of the covers for both SSH-40 and 6B7 helmets were in flora camouflage pattern. Body armor. The main body armor vest was 6B23-1 in flora camouflage pattern. 
and experimental mountain camouflage pattern known as mountain flora or desert mountain camouflage pattern or camouflage pattern for southern regions. Body armor vests or load bearing vests in this pattern were often used by different units of North Caucasus military district at that time. Also in smaller numbers on some pictures some other body armor vests could be seen on the pictures of the 1st battalion. 6B11-3 and 6B12 in Barviha camouflage pattern. Load carrying systems. Some pictures demonstrate RPS smirch, Russian commercial chest tricks, combination of the body armor vest with belt and standard Soviet magazine and grenade pouches. Also, if it is a sniper with SVD, Soviet SVD magazine pouch. But the most common load bearing vest was 6SHA 92 1 in different camouflage patterns. It could be in Barviha, Flora or pretty often in this experimental mountain flora camouflage pattern. We need to point that a lot of troops did not have a body armor. And if you don't have a body armor, it is pretty complicated to adjust this vest. So as you can see, a lot of guys adjust them to the minimum settings, so it is used more like a chest trick rather than the load bearing vest. 6SHA 92 is fastened with three straps with tourniquet buttons and a belt buckle. There is one double magazine pouch on each side. Each pouch can hold two magazines for AK rifle or an RPK machine gun. If the pouch is used with AK magazines, there is a strap to secure them. Each pouch is getting closed with tourniquet button and velcro. Behind the right and the left magazine pouches, there is a pouch for a signal player. Right one is only for ROP signal flare. And the left one is double purpose. It can hold ROP flare as well as bayonet. And there is a hook to secure the bayonet scabbard. On the right side there are two grenade pouches. You can see s mark tourniquet and the first aid kit in mine, since I don't have grenades yet. Above the grenade pouches there is a small pocket for a magazine loading tool. And unfortunately there is nothing else that can fit this pocket. I tried Zippo, I tried matches. Chinese lighter may fit, but the flap won't close. On the left side there is additional divided pouch, which can fit two AK magazines or a portable radio and a Soviet flashlight like in my case. And again in my case this is the bow fang. Originally of course these radios were not used because they were not even available that time. On the inner side of the vest there are two pockets and the instruction. Right pocket with the flap and the left one without it. Both pockets have velcro closures. Also 6SHA 92 is issued with two pouches for underbarrel grenade launchers grenades. One is shorter, while another one is longer, as you can see. It is because this one is for the standard GP25 rounds, while this one is for GP25P rounds, which are patkidish, or uh, frog rounds, which are jumping. And these are pretty good for an airsoft, because while this pouch can hold standard tuck-in rounds, this one can hold either tag-in rounds or launching shells, which is perfect. Also, it comes with another additional mag pouch, which can hold four RPK magazines or four AK magazines or combination. And again, whenever it is used with AK magazines, it also has a strap to secure them in place to prevent wobble. And of course uh, the standard Soviet canteen with canteen cover. SSHA 92 West's belt fits perfectly to carry this canteen. MPL 50 shovel to attach this shovel to 6SHA 92 you just need to turn it upside down and you put this loops to the belt and handle you need to secure inside of the shoulder strap. There is a specific shoulder strap pocket to do so. And few words about some other equipment. First of all it is standard Soviet military flashlight which you saw earlier. A rubber replica of the Soviet bayonet 6H4. 6H4, which is 6H4 in English, is an index grau. So this is something like this NATO designated number, but Russian way. So 6 is infantry. Every time you see 6, it means that 
This equipment is for infantry. High in this case is for холодное оружие, which is called steel arms. So everything with plates or bayonets, they will have this ha. And uh, four is the model, because we know that there is also six uh, ha 5 or earlier model six ha 3 and uh, everything with B is a body armor, so 6B7 is infantry body armor model 7. Now you know something new. Also some NSP or RRP flares could be used. And of course smart tourniquet and bandage. Since the Afghanistan war there was a Soviet tradition transferred to all post-Soviet nations to wrap a smart tourniquet around the rifle stock. And it was a very bad idea because tourniquet tends to crack under the sunlight so it will break on you whenever you need it. In 2008 this tradition was still in place and a lot of guys did it. I do understand that there was a reason behind it in Afghanistan because the steel stock of the AKS-74 under the sunlight could uh, hit so much so it can burn your cheeks. But this was not the case uh, during the Chechen war or uh, during the Ossetia conflict, so I do not understand why they did it, but it is what it is. Also, guys used uh, IE-2 uh, first aid kit. First battalion was issued with R-159 radios, which are pretty heavy and bulky. Some commanders had some smaller, more portable radios. I believe there were Motorola's or some other radios of that time. I used Baofeng, again, it is completely not authentic because it was not even the thing at that time. They did not exist, I believe, by 2008. But again, for the airsoft purpose, it is the best radio ever. Of course, guys carried a Soviet standard infantry mass kit and Soviet half shelter. A few words about the backpack from uh, 6 sha 92 it has a main compartment and also four cells for the magazine pouches. Two of them have velcro closures to secure magazines and for some reason other two do not have velcro closures. But it is what it is. It can be used as a standalone backpack. As you can see it has some straps here. However, it can also be attached to the vest itself. Few words about firearms and of course officers carried standard Makarov pistol in the standard Soviet Makarov holster. And again in my case this is airsoft Makarov pistol made by WE which we converted to give it more like the Soviet Makarov look. And I have videos about this conversion on my channel so go and see them. This holster perfectly fits to the belt of 6 Sha 92 vest. Standard rifle was AK-74M and for some reason the second most widespread rifle in the battalion was AKS-74U. That's why I use AKS-74U with my kit. And again, this is regular airsoft replica made by Endel. And also in some quantities AK-74 and AKS-74 were used. It is pretty interesting where did they get AKS-74 because standard motor rifles theoretically should be issued with AK-74 and uh, once this phased out uh, they should be issued with AK-74M. So AKS-74 is something for naval infantry units or VDV. Recon Platoon had AKMS with GP-25 and AKMS with PBS-1 suppressor. Machine guns RPK-74 RPK-74M and PKM. Also they used RPG-7 grenade launchers, miscellaneous Soviet rocket-propelled grenades and SVD or SVDS sniper rifles. And now let's see how it all looks together. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment, put like, if you want to help channel financially, links are in the description and see you soon. Yeah.